Hi there, this is Honoré Jorin from Sophist. Whenever we speak about sampling plans, we cannot help to mention the OC curves, operating characteristic curves. And each sampling plan has its own OC curve. I just want to help you visualize it and it will help you interpret the results of your random inspections. I did a little whiteboard session and I hope it makes it clear for you. Here is the way it's usually presented. So on this axis here is the probability of acceptance of the batch. Okay, from zero to 100%. From for sure it's rejected to for sure it's accepted. And then on this axis here, we have the percentage of defectives in the wool batch. Okay, and this usually we don't know about it except if we do an inspection on the wool batch. But of course, this is only um, an interesting analysis when we do a random inspection. But still, um, it's it's um, it's something we need to keep in mind here. So the way it works. Okay, ideally, ideally we would have something that looks like this until it hits the AQL acceptance quality limit that you set. Then it goes all the way to 0% acceptance. Okay, so if we have something, if we have a batch that's here with 0.5% of defects, then, okay, it's 100%. It's accepted. If it's here, again, okay, it's accepted. If it's here, 0%, it's rejected. All right, so this is in theory. Let me remove all this stuff. Um, but unfortunately, this is only when we check the wool batch and we have perfect inspection process that catches all the defects and so on. All right, so um, statisticians have devised uh, some sampling plans and the sampling plans unfortunately cannot follow exactly that kind of approach like this and unfortunately this is a it's based on a hypergeometric distribution it it can be exactly like this but it's trying to espouse it as clo closely as possible all right so actually it starts here around one at 100 percent it goes down immediately of course up crosses here then goes down some, somehow like, somewhat like this. Now, um, you will see that obviously here, well, there's a risk that something here at 1.5% might actually be here, meaning that it's rejected. Ouch, it's outside, it's, it's above the curve, it's rejected. Even though the percentage of defects defective is low uh, so um, okay let me remove this uh, so here this is the producer's risk okay the alpha risk um, and there's always a risk again it's a random inspection uh, we're trying to, to, to find the best trade-off, um, but it comes at a cost, comes at somewhat of a risk of rejecting something at the expense of the producer, even though it's good. It also comes at the expense of the consumer, sometimes accepting something that is not good. And this is what we call the consumer risk. Now, where is it shown on this graph? Well, I have to introduce a new concept that's actually not really uh, defined in the ISO 2859 uh, standard. Uh, it's not front and center. People usually don't know about it, but it's the limiting quality. Uh, there's, there's, other ways, there's other ways to call it LTPD uh, um, and so on. Um, okay, uh, this is what they consider um, like what's really, 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 really totally unacceptable, okay? Uh, and it's, it's if you set the AQL here at 2.5%, well, they, they think that since this is uh, only applicable for a continuous series of batches that are made by the same factory with the same components, same processes, and so on, uh, and you just check them 
uh, and you, you they want to keep the producer's risk low and at the expense of the consumer's risk um, here let's call it consumer oop, consumer risk okay the beta risk the, the risk of accepting something that is not good and as you can see uh, well this is at five sorry five percent and this is ten percent risk this is in the standard <clears throat> it's actually written there <clears throat> so um, a lot of people don't know about that but that's that's the way it's uh, it's it's set up if you use the ISO 2859-1 standard which uh, took the military standard 105 uh, what was the last one G I think no uh, E yeah E was probably the latest, latest version uh, and also the ASQ ANS size Z 1.4 okay all of these are based on the same statistics um, Okay, so this might come as a shock to you, but that's uh, that's that's the way it is. Um, so again, to to um, to make it clear, if there's something that's here, one point five percent, well, most of the time it's going to be here, which means accepted. Sometimes it's going to be here, rejected, even though it's good. Um, if you, there's something at four percent, well, it's still going to be accepted a lot of the time. It's going to be rejected. Uh, some of the time, uh, which is why when you have um, a sampling size sampling size of let's say 200 pieces well actually actually the acceptance and rejection for an AQL of 2.5 which is what a lot of people consider standard uh, but, uh, in, in, especially in, in China, Vietnam and so on doesn't have anything standard uh, it's that there's many other um, preferred AQLs as they say in the standards that you can choose. Uh, so if you were 2.5 on 200, it would be five, and then up to five accepted, and then rejected, starting at six, right? Well, no, um, it's more like 10 and 11 actually. So now you understand why when it's still at let's say five percent, there's still a lot that gets accepted here. Okay, and a lot get, gets rejected. Um, that's that's the idea because the consumer risk is ten percent. That's the way it works. All right. I hope this was clear. This um, responded to some maybe some of the questions you had. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, contact me if you have any questions. Thanks.